to The Gathering Greenhouse, a podcast to help us grow together. You know us all by now, but I'm Steve, well, David, you know, and John. Well, you watching for the very first time. And our, <laughs> what do you, I don't know, our unseen partner in crime, Matt. <laughs> the unholy ghost. <laughs> <laughs> the unseen and very heard. Yeah. You know. So uh, I brought in a snack this morning. Yeah, you did. I'm kind of excited about okay, this one. Okay, I figured last week you, I knew you weren't going to like it. I knew that you weren't going to like our <laughs> our uh, pumpkin spice roll. you don't roll. like anything. Well, pumpkin spice, like I said, you don't look like I a am white kinda, I girl. I am kind of a Grinch. Which... Nothing against white girls who like pumpkin spice stuff, but you know it is. They are reaching for a certain demographic. So this is, which in the picture here we got slices of bacon and just a bowl of bacon. Have you ever, like other than maybe a is salad? There, is there a bowl of bacon in there? Inside of here, no. Oh, Un- that, that's ar- artificially flavored. So this is a smoked bacon uh, bag of Mike Sells. So way to go, Mike Sells. So uh, at my college. Uh, they would have BLTs. Uh, it was like on the menu in the cafeteria, and they would just make buckets and buckets of bacon. So you'd walk up, and the trays would be just overflowing. Nobody made BLTs. We just called it Bacon Day, and oh, you would just go yeah. get yep, piles absolutely. of bacon. And uh, did they catch on to that the students were doing that? Or no, they, no, because it was like very, that when I was there too. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. I think they recognized that was the most popular like thing. And yeah, well, I don't think you guys still had Steak and Chicken Day. Uh, you had a much better cafeteria. I would say we, uh, when I was there, the food was actually. Uh, Are you in the okay. new in the new trucks? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, mm-hmm. I got a question for you guys because this is the way it was at a college that I went to. But was there a a like? Is it called Chucks when you were there too? Like both you as Chucks? I think it still is, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so I know Chucks is not there anymore. He's not there anymore, but I think they might still call it Chucks. Was there like a Chucks flavor? Like all oh, the yeah, food? All your, no, it had was, a like. It was Chuck's, your clothes. I don't know. You don't know if you walked into the cafeteria wearing like a hoodie or your jacket, um, it would smell like, for the rest of so time. So like like a thrift like store. Like when you talks. walk in a thrift store, every thrift store smells the same. I know, I know but like <laughs> they all <laughs> they have, there's like with our. So I went to the University of Akron, <coughs> and there was like there was a flavor so across everything. We were zips. What is? But it? you were a zip. Uh, so a zip. The the nickname the zips came from actually a a shoe that zipped up. Back in whenever the 1940s or something, when Goodyear That's was like making really everything, cool. Yeah, it was very. It must have been very popular, but not popular enough to still have them. Matt's gonna Google it for yeah. us. Go ahead, Matt. All right. It's also I know I've said this before, but the only female mascot in the NCAA, because only the females have the pouch, the males don't. So, for what it's worth. <laughs> How do you know? Right. How do you know that? Like, so like, I heard. Wait, 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 wait. It is 2023, good sir. Let's just go. Let's you just can't talk assume through, anything about these mascots. Let's, let's just talk through some of the mascots that are obvious and, and like whether yeah. or not they're male. Like like a wolverine. Mm-hmm. Like who's more ferocious, the male wolverine or the female? I have no idea. I don't, need, I don't know anything about right, wolverines. What about like the ducks? Well, you can tell from the ducks do which the have color. A gender? <laughs> but I don't think the ducks mascot is a mallard. It's some cartoon. Well, you'd have to go back to like w- what it was originally started with. I th- I think this claim by Akron mm-hmm. is rated false. Well, I don't know if it's an official fact, claim. Fact check. Matt's, false. Matt's, Matt, we got Not other the thing. only female mask. The only, the only no. one that has ever what existed about from the beginning of time. What about all the What universe? about Liberty? They're the flames, right? <laughs> I'm not going to step on this one what? again. <laughs> I thought they were like, uh, are they the flames? <laughs> Aren't they? I don't know. I thought there was like they're, an they're eagle or something. Yeah. Yeah. Every every we Christian college else. has to be the the eagles <laughs> or the crusaders. <laughs> like that's the crusaders. Like, well, that was D- Dayton Christian, I think. Now yeah. they're the warriors. That's a good brand. Yeah. The warriors. Brand uh, change. Yeah. <laughs> Matt, do you looks like you have something there? Uh, about the um, zips. Yeah. Um, student Margaret Hamlin suggested. Tippers in 1927, which was also so the name of a popular rubber o- overshoe sold okay. by Akron's um, uh, uh, um BF Goodrich. Okay, Goodrich. so not Goodyear, Goodrich. Okay, but that is not the same. 
No. No. No, they're yeah, different yeah. companies. Oh, Goodrich is the tires. Well, no, Goodyear's, Goodyear is the tires. Well, Good, BF Goodrich is tires also. They do tires as well. Yeah. But I don't I don't think I don't even know if that exists anymore. It probably got bought out. Cause Firestone is now Bridgestone too. Which Bridgestone bought off? I'm tired of this, of this conversation. Wow. Yeah, you. The only people who care about this is Akron people because yep. of the rubber history. You are absolutely correct yeah. about that. Exactly. So uh, anyway, all isn't, that isn't Tommy Boy a, from Akron? No, that was Kaga Falls. So I uh, I stayed. How at, many people outside of Ohio know the difference between Akron and Cuyahoga Falls? So they landed. Well, I remember being in the theater and then they, s- seeing them say they landed their. Pl- they landed in the Kaga Falls airport, which doesn't exist. There's no airport in Kaga Falls. And I was like, oh. Are you sure there's not like, even like a tiny one? There isn't even a tiny no. one. Hey, not the even airport's a tiny what one. you make it. Okay. So it smells just like barbecue right, potato chips. Try a couple of these. That's really ah. what it smells like, probably from the smokiness and the... I just want to know. These are somewhat they healthy. They it's, smell like dog treats. It's Some, uh, somewhat healthy. Zero, grand, zero trans fat and gluten-free. So, you know... I'm skeptical as to the product. Would you like to try some, Matt? Do you know what we discovered last night at our board meeting? I'll grab it. We discovered at the board meeting last night that Swiss cake rolls only have like 280 calories per package. I just want to point out here for the camera. Look at this pile that David grabbed. You can eat the whole box (laughs) and and still not get to your daily (laughs) caloric allowance. I these legit for both of us. These oh, le- was it? These legit wow. smell like dog treats. This is they do. They really do smell like dog treats. I wouldn't have thought of that, but I, it I will smells, take your word for it. It smells like dog treats. Yeah. I, this when like I opened it. the bag originally, it smelled a little like barbecue. But now that now that it's out, and do, you have a little more. Does, of the does anyone have artificial? the expertise to know if they taste like dog treats? No. I hey. probably. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead. Are we are we on path for the worst podcast ever here so far? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Not good. Oh my gosh! Very very salty. You Matt likes them? I do. I do not taste bacon. Oh my gosh! At all? I do now officially very, know what a dog treat tastes very, like. Very very overwhelming flavor. Not not a good flavor. No bacon really. I just like salty and savory. There's no bacon, but there is definitely a. Mike Sells should be ashamed of themselves. It tastes like burnt bacon grease smells. I love how you're going on. I don't know how bad it is. <laughs> you put another one. In I need mouth. to get another taste. See if I'm like. I gotta wash out my mouth. I haven't decided yet. It's like bourbon where you have to like take the first taste and it just like it tastes ter- terrible. And then you have to take another sip to actually taste it. I'm about to sue Mike Maybe Sells. try one that's not as flavor looking. For that assault. That was intense. Do not try do not try the bacon Mike Sells. Mike it's, Sells is a great brand. That was not Mike Sells a good idea. Was a great brand. That was not a since good. They, I don't mind it since they switched really? factories. It's I really, I really can't taste much Something's of anything. Um, I can tell there's some things I'm, there. I'm shocked that it's divided. Yeah, you here. like it because it's probably closer to a potato chip for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a like, really ah, good a potato, potato chip. chip. It's very crunchy. Like it's say, Mike Sells, like the wavy Mike Sells are my mm-hmm. favorite. They're thicker. Yeah, they don't it's, break it's a easy. really good potato. As far as like texture and crunch, mm-hmm. great. Flavor, very disappointing. And you know what else I, is disappointing? I won't say try again. It's the only bacon flavored thing I could find at Speedway. No other bacon. There's a bacon flavor market out there that if someone could produce something good, you know, I, I find, find I, I think my my experience is usually when things try to make bacon flavored things, it's just almost always bad. <laughs> yeah, almost. It, they, it's just you can't do it. Yeah, the only way to have a good bacon flavored thing is to have actual actual bacon. 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 Yeah, yeah. Why can't you use actual bacon though? I'm not sure why you couldn't. Why? Why instead of chips tasting why like they, bacon? Like, why couldn't fried, they just put bacon in the bag or fry the potatoes in bacon, bacon grease? bags? We so would make was, so much. Money I was actually thinking bags. about this. So. The the big the big new secret bacon recipe. It's really not that big a deal. It's just making your bacon in a stew pot, right? Okay. So yeah, that's what that was my next that's question here. Is. That's in a stew pot. So explain that because I know I had people asking or me or afterwards. It, what? what you just how did that make it better? Yeah. What, what? Because basically you're deep frying it in its own grease. Oh. Because what what happens is as you, you so, so, what I, so here's what yeah, I did. I take a take a pack of Costco bacon, right? Which cut it in honest. half, or you could cut it in thirds, so you have even smaller <laughs> pieces, and you end up with bite sized bacon, which is pretty cool. And you just peel them off and throw them in, right? And you've already got the thing on high. Yeah. As you're what throwing type them of in. bacon are you starting with? Costco. Costco. Just bacon. Costco thick okay. cut bacon, right? And just throw them all in, and, and then you stir. How many pounds do you have to get? I just did one package. Is all what, I did. And one package is a pound. 
Uh, well, two in pounds. Costco, you have to buy them in like ten two pounds. Two one yeah. pound <laughs> packages of it together. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so so one half of that package. Probably. So one one yeah right. So then you know basically the grease all just kind of overwhelm. So basically, it's just cooking in its own grease, which yeah. makes it pretty awesome. But I was thinking about this. What I might do next time I make it, yeah, is then cook a batch of popcorn in the grease in the grease Ooh. instead of like using oil. I'm I'm skeptical here on this that it tastes on that much better. No, that the bacon tastes that much better. It makes it probably you can be extra skeptical. crispy without burning it. Would yeah. be my like yeah. It's it's yeah. It's just it's really. It's I could have brought in today. Yeah. yeah, I want to try it. The nice I'm thing is you try end up with all these little pieces, and and so they're you know you just you pop them in the fridge. And the the beautiful thing about bacon is you don't yeah. have to warm it up. Right. You eat cold bacon out of the fridge. Oh, it's, it's still great. awesome. Yeah. So so was it crispy? Yeah. So I mean it, you. You get a nut. Actually, the longer you cook it, the crispier it's going to get. Okay. So you can like, but you got to stir it. That's the key. And you just keep stirring until it gets to where you want it to be. Okay. And so mine is just on the edge of starting to be crispy. Okay. That's why I like I it. I like it crispy. I'm a crispy bacon person. And my guess is I'm you could- I'm every bacon. Every kind of bacon. Yeah, I, I'm- Kind of person. My, my guess is you could probably do it in a way that you have some that's crispy and some that's not. I'm going to try this. Ha- but with, but with Duncan, uh, uh, um, maple bacon seasoning. You're gonna put bacon seasoning on bacon. Why would you do that? Why don't you just I, add maple? I, no, that is. I, I am gonna do that one maple, of these times. That, yeah, that would be a good idea. It. Yeah, definitely put syrup I've got, in it. There, I, 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 I've got Duncan's um, seasoning. You guys had the. Uh, There's no need to season bacon. <laughs> Yeah, don't, don't don't do Doesn't that. Doesn't it come pre-seasoned? No. I mean, they already are. Se- they're putting like it's cured that, uh, in salt, right? Yeah. Candied bacon. It wouldn't what be kind? naturally the candied salt. bacon. Like, oh, uh, yeah, that's fantastic. About it. I don't know. Yeah. It's, uh, the, it's good. Um, like, Monica Turner. She does really, so really they, good. You put like cayenne pepper in with the sugar. So, so they, has a little, they do something at kick. first watch with their bacon. Yeah, that's the Matt is still going for the potato chips. I feel like they ruined your bag now, Matt. So it's. I've had it where it's either too sweet. Or like, just kind of a little like. Look, there, there are some things. There are some things in life that are just good, and just <laughs> just be that. content. Well, I have one more question be about content this. With what this you have, pot full of bacon and bacon grease. Is it when you? How do you pull it out? Like, so it's yeah. in the pot. How do you get? Like, are you getting tongs? Yeah, I just use tongs. So and I, then I put, what I are you plate, setting it onto? I get a plate. Yeah, and I put a paper towel on. Okay. It. And that was my question. Like tongs on. You should have come in with bandages all over your fingers. You're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? You just grab it. Was it? There's some like TV show or oh no, The Office where he wants the like bacon smell in the morning and he burnt his foot. He, burnt, he steps on his George Foreman <laughs> yeah, grill because he wanted the smell of bacon <laughs> in the morning. And he's like walking on crutches. <laughs> yeah. And then he tried to stick his foot in like the X-ray machine <laughs> or the CAT scan with Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good episode. We should uh, we should do an episode of the podcast where we just watch office clips. Oh, the Christmas office one. I already started watching. I watch. I think season two was the first season they did the Christmas stuff, and that, that was the Yankee, Yankee swap. swap. <laughs> All right, wait, I just got I just got a great idea. We're gonna do a a pastor preaching challenge on one of these episodes where. <laughs> You, we play a clip from the office, and you have to oh, preach okay. a that thirty be, second sermon. That would be fun using that clip as an as the uh, imagery. Yeah, that would, would be that. Be, that would be all fun. right. We'll put that together. <laughs> That'd be funny. Okay, so that's all my baking questions I had. But after you after you talked I don't about hate that, these chips. Okay, I don't hate them. All right, but you don't love them. I don't, I'm. I don't. I, I think the only potato chips I love are probably okay. Doritos. So you wouldn't go out of your way. Potato chips. They're not. <laughs> they're corn chips. Yeah. They That's why they're good. <laughs> I don't love potato chips. Okay. <laughs> Wait, Pringles. Pringles. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. W- what is a Pringle? Because it's it's not like a potato a chip. In but they like puree it and then. I don't know what it is, but I, lo- I like Pringles. So. It's a b- potato product. These are not product. as good as Pringles. I'm not a, I'm not a huge Pringles fan, <laughs> only because I don't like the aftertaste. I don't know. It feels like it leaves a weird. Whenever you, oh, I love prank. Oh, what's the matter with you? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not Akron. sure. I'm not sure whether the matter is me. But I don't like the. I don't like the taste that it leaves in my mouth. It's kind of like that. I thought I knew you. Processed. Like, you've been working here nine years. <laughs> and like, this is so just now, now that coming we know out. That Matt and David sure. like these chips. Next week we should bring in. Uh, 
dog food and <laughs> like see if they can it? tell the difference between dog food and these chips. <laughs> I'll it, do it for sure tastes like, smells. He'll, he'll do it. Matt smells will do like it. dog Matt will do it. Yeah. Matt said it. Like he will that. do it. We're gonna hold him to it next week. I, okay, well, I'm gonna bring in some of our our dog jerky. Okay, and I'll bring try dog it. Jerky just to clarify, and jerky. that's jerky that we give to our dogs. Real not jerky? jerky that's made from dogs. Okay, that's good. That's good clarification. <laughs> Either Is way, it, like, are you making it or are you no, buying it's Trader this? Joe's? It's Trader You're buying Joe's. Buying it from Trader yeah. Joe's. Mm-hmm. Okay. So say, I've actually I might have had that. I saw your. There's a bag in the refrigerator here That's with mine. your name on it. Touch it not. That I saw. I'm like, I wonder if this is deer it's jerky. Venison, yeah, I thought so. Yeah. I really want to try it. I, I saw it in there. I'm like, oh, in there. no one was here, you. and I'm like, oh, this looks like a we, bag. You can try it if you okay. want. Okay. Yeah. I didn't take one just for the record here, but I was very, very tempted. Yeah. Because I trust <laughs> that God's going to provide some for me. <laughs> See that link there? Yeah. May I catch that? Okay. Yeah, good job. All right. So we're going to be talking about the sermon on Sunday. My first question here for you is, why does generosity matter? Why should we care? Like, why, if God is going to provide for the church and he's going to provide for his people, like, why should we care about generosity? Yeah, well, let's let's take it out of the the church world and just Just, out of religion completely. Okay, that's a good idea. And just talk about... You know, why is generosity good for people? Because mm-hmm. it is. So I, I think there's a lot of reasons why. I think uh, one reason generosity is just good for people is it gets our eyes and our mind off of our own problems. Anytime we focus on helping others, we're thinking about them, not ourselves, right? And so when I take my mind off of my own problems and put it onto how can I be a solution to other people's problems, that's good for me. Um, it is bad for me to sit in the stew of my own misery. And I think a lot of people do this where mm-hmm. uh, like, like we all have problems. Okay. We all have issues, right? So some people choose to live there. Some people choose to get out of there and choosing to get away from your problems and to focus on other things is good for you. Generosity yeah. helps you do that. Okay. So would you say that it is, it is a good thing to practice or would you say God created us to help others and share those things. So, like, so remember, do you think I, there's I a difference? It, I took it outside of the world of religion yeah. and God for a minute. We'll come back. We can come back okay. to that because I think that's an important question. Okay. Um, and I think we need to go beyond practicing it. I think we should actually perform it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how, and how is that different? No. Okay. So I think that's, that's one thing. I think another reason it's good for us is it is whenever you're generous, you're being unspokenly, is that a word? Unspokenly okay. grateful. Okay. Right. Because for me to give something away, I have to acknowledge that I have something more than I need, Mm -hmm. which is awesome. Right. So if I would give you a potato chip, it's a very large potato chip. I'm being generous with that potato chip. No, you're Um, not. The only reason, (laughs) the only reason I can be generous is because I have more than I need. And, And so one of the things I ought to do when I practice or perform generosity is to be grateful. Be grateful. Like, mm. this is so cool that I can give... I have so much that I can give this away. And, and so generosity reminds us that we have more than we need. And I think that's another reason yeah. why it's good for us. But so, back... Where ahead. where does generosity start? Because if I'm not... If I'm not taking care of my own finances, um, if I'm not, you know, practicing uh, gratefulness for what I have, then I may not even ever have the opportunity to be generous. Yeah. So that, that's a really good question. And mm-hmm. we're actually going to address that in church in two weeks. We're going to talk about contentment. Uh-huh. And, I'll, you know, spoiler alert, here's one of my main points for that sermon. Uh, gratitude plus generosity equals contentment. And, and so I think there is a sense in which gr- gratitude gets it starting and then generosity comes next. But I think you can also, I mean, you can also be generous even when you don't feel like being generous. And you can be generous even when you don't think you have yeah. enough. Because this is the third thing I was going to say about generosity is that sometimes generosity is something that we do uh, just to get us to a place where we're grateful. Yeah. Like maybe I'm not feeling grateful, uh, but as I give things away, it, it can really help to move yeah. me. Um, it's one of these, this, the concept of sometimes I need to move my feet and let my heart follow. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I do something because it's the right thing and I know it's the right thing, even if I don't feel like doing it. Yeah. And what happens when I move my feet, my heart eventually follows that and, and it leads me to a place of gratitude. And sometimes it can lead me to a place of more generosity. But I'll go back to your question that you asked. So then the question is, well, is it just, is generosity just good for it? Or are we actually designed that yeah. way? 
Well, I don't know. What do you think? Um, I think it's a little bit of both, okay. honestly. Um, I think that, that um, you know, God created us uh to be in, made in his image, um, and he is someone who richly blesses us. Um, so, so I think it is it is part of us. If we are made in his image, then it is part of what makes us a complete and right person. Mm-hmm. You know, like I mean, I think you can live your life not being that. You could be a Scrooge and not give give things away. You but know, I think it's going to hurt you in the long run. You know what's ironic? We use that term, be a, be a Scrooge. Yeah. Do you, does anybody remember how that story ends? Yeah, he was a good guy. He ends up being end. generous. Well, we, we only see a just little... Like, just how, like did the it Grinch. stick, though? Don't be a Grinch. We don't, we don't have a part two. <laughs> yeah, like, like you, you, you have a life-changing event, and then you're like, I'm going to change my life. But does it stick? Did, like, did you actually make why life you, change? Why are you ruining the magic? So, I, you, you brought it up. I'm just, I'm just making another comment so, so on it. So that, the... the <laughs> Scrooge's transformation from being um, Scrooge, right, yeah. to being someone who is generous, he- is actually what it is for us uh, as Christians, right? So uh, I think God made us in the ideal when you know before sin, humanity we were meant to be generous, to care for one one another, to you know see each other's needs, and actually you know before the fall there wouldn't have been needs, right? Um, but because of our fallen nature, right, we tend to focus on ourselves. And when you focus on yourself, you don't see the blessings you have. You only see your your issues and your concerns. Um, but part of what Christ does in us is he helps us to see others the way he sees others. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, I think, is where a lot of generosity comes from um, to the point where... You know, I, 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 you know, as Christ is generously dying on the cross, paying for my sin, right? Um, it wasn't um, like Christ didn't, wasn't sitting there going like, oh, I have so many more lives to give, right? He gave even all of himself. And so for us as Christians, that is why we can even be generous in those times where we don't feel like we have the ability to give any, you know, to give yeah. because mm-hmm. we're, we might be in a hard spot too. Yeah. Well, if we didn't live in a fallen world, which we do, <clears throat> and sin didn't exist, would we have to be grateful? You know, maybe not because yes. we still need to yes. be grateful. Well, how? I how think we if, just if, would be grateful. Yeah, that's right. what I mean yeah. is that we would be grateful. You wouldn't have to be grateful because it would just be part of life. Right. And we would be generous too. Yeah. So, so I, I really believe you can figure out theoretically most of life's problems in Genesis one through three, right? So Genesis two, um, God is looking at creation. Everything is good, right? It is good. It is good. It is good. It is good. It is very good. Genesis two, he looks at man and the very first thing that is not good is what? He's alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because we are actually designed to think of others. Uh, the reason it's not good for man to be alone is because being alone means you have no one to focus on but yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's bad for you. So God designed us to focus on others. And and that that other focused relationship, I mean, the two parts of it are generosity. Yeah. That's what I give to you. And gratitude, that's me receiving with gratefulness what you give mm-hmm. to me. So yeah. it's it's the give and the take right there. Yeah. It's hard it's a little hard for me to like I hear what you're saying. I see it that way, but I, it's hard for me to really like wrap my mind around that because this is the reality I live in. Right. So yes. It's hard for me to put my mind in the sense of like, okay, where would Adam? What would he be thinking when he's just entered in this like perfect created world by God, and now he's alone? Would he be feeling alone? I I would think so because well, if, if, God but if he doesn't know the difference, it, right? No, he does know. He does know. That's this is why God had him name all the animals. Because oh, that's so yeah. so what God does is he he says to Adam, yeah, that's name all the concept. animals. Yeah. And and in that it says all the animals had a partner, but there was no suitable partner found for the man. And he's like, Hey, wait a second. So this was yeah. this was Where's God's way of showing Adam, even though <clears throat> you, Adam, are are made wondrously image perfectly, you're not complete without somebody else. I mean, it's, it's just a beautiful way that God brings Adam to this place of realizing he needs something else. He's not enough on his own, even though he's yeah. sinless. Well, so you got to imagine that it was probably all along part of God's plan, but he needed to show it to Adam. I don't have to imagine that. Right. I mean, yeah, I, I meant that a little <laughs> right. facetiously yeah. in, the, in the sense of like, of that. Yeah. but like, like that was his plan and purpose to show that, that 
to show Adam and to show all of us. Yes. You know, like there, there was a reason behind that, but I honestly have never thought of it that way until, I mean, it makes sense, but I've just never thought of it, looked at it through that light. Yeah. We, we could spend a whole year preaching through yeah. Genesis one through three. Right. I mean, and, and, and it would be great the whole way. Yeah. Now, now here's the real question with, um, the creation of Adam and Eve. Did they have belly buttons? No, of yes. course they didn't. Yes. No. Yes. It's a scar. Why would they need? God is not a God is not wasteful. You know, he wouldn't he wouldn't create that. But he is sense. generous and he, he lavishes us with more than we need. A belly button is you lavish. You get a belly button and you get. A I feel button. like it's like a you know it's it's a necessary. Do you guys know what the argument is for belly buttons? To link your the link no, no, your, the argument to the mom for why God did create with belly buttons. There is actually what? a legitimate argument for it. <laughs> what? So yeah, so so. The, What's the behind co- your belly button, right? Like, does it still link to your stomach? Like, if is there something, and it just is ended now? Are you wait? Because like, like your belly button goes, it's like a tube into your stomach, right? Oh, what's on the back side of your belly? Yeah, button? like is is it still connected to your stomach on the other side? You think? There's one way to because I know out. with like Harper when she had to get a feeding tube in and and nutrients, they went through her belly button at first. <laughs> <laughs> Am I derailing what we oh, should no, actually derail- be talking you're about? You're not derailing. It's derail. It's gone. <laughs> I did that when I asked the question. Okay. Sorry. Yes. All right. Let's David. move on. <laughs> I, Belly I'm buttons, curious. I want to hear the answer now. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the bacon thing. You just Google told us it. you had the greatest bacon ever, but you didn't mention how you did it in the sermon. I did have the greatest bacon ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. You're right. <laughs> You want to move on to the next question? I think we need to. Okay. No more talk about generosity, even though we are going to talk about it more here. Does the Bible really teach that people should give 10% of their money to the church? So this is like, can you find the scripture? Is it telling us 10%? I think this is a great, great uh, question to answer because a lot of people would say yes to that. Yes, they would. Why? Because... Right. There's, there are some examples of that, but it's also in the, it's in the light of giving your best, giving your mm-hmm. first fruits. Like, so it's, yeah, be generous, but you know, that 10%, I think comes back to like giving to, um, the, the priest, right? Is yeah. that where it comes yeah. from? I, I was always taught growing up that the word tithe literally meant 10%. 10%. Mm-hmm. Does it? You know, but I don't know. I just I've heard, was always I've, I've heard that. that too, but I've never looked it's, it up. It's, it's not a terrible translation. And yeah. I think it, it's a fair way to make the argument is that wherever you see tithe, it is probably talking about a, a 10%-ish yeah. kind of thing. Which is a good number. I mean, I think it's still fairly... You know, I, obviously we're going to probably add more mm-hmm. to it, but it's a good at least starting place or a goal, right? Yeah. So I think, it should be more than that. But. So I think the best argument for 10% is yeah. that that's the biblical standard in the Old Testament, yeah. right? Um, it doesn't really get discussed in the New Testament as a tithe so much. There's really only one place in the New Testament that talks about a tithe, which is in Hebrews. And it's talking about, you know, Abraham tithe to Melchizedek and, you know, so go on like stuff like that. So, um, it's really not talking about what we give, uh, all of the giving passages in the New Testament don't really give a number. So you think of the the widow in the temple that mm-hmm. comes and gives her two pennies, yeah. mm-hmm. right? We don't know if that was a tithe or not. We don't know how much money right. she had. Um, in Second Corinthians, when Paul is taking up a but collection, but didn't it say? I mean, it said in there that she gave all she all had. She had. That's yeah. So so maybe it's more than a tithe. Right. I don't know. In Second Corinthians, where Paul is taking up a collection uh, for the Jerusalem church, and he's getting money from all the different churches, and he actually gives some guidelines there yeah. for giving. He says, you know, be a cheerful giver, uh, set aside money every week, uh, proportion it to what you have. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me that he does not seem to say it's got to be 10%. Mm-hmm. He just says proportion it to what you have. And part of that is because he's dealing with Gentiles there. Mm-hmm. So they don't have a background in tithing. So it may not make sense for them to say a yeah. tithe. But I think also the New Testament standard is generosity. Yeah. The Old Testament standard is give your tithe. That's all you need to give. Yeah. Right. The New Testament standard is give generously, give in proportion to what you have. Right? So I think, you know, it probably is more appropriate biblically to say uh, what Christians ought to do is look at what they have and then decide what does it look like for me to be generous with this? Mm -hmm. Like, where should I give it? What should I give? Time, talents, treasures. And and I think that for some Christians, uh, they can give 10% of their income and they're being stingy. 
Mm -hmm. right? They're, they're being selfish. And I think for other Christians, they can give 3% of their income and that's incredibly generous. Yeah. So I I think it really is a um, proportional thing, not necessarily 10%. Well, I think too, one of the big things is in all those examples, um, in the new Testament about, you know, giving to the church and generosity, a lot of it deals more with your attitude towards giving, not with what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, Kind of, kind of the key, you know, I was thinking about this with um, a different thing in the scripture, but like, uh, you know, Jesus came and said, Hey, uh, you've heard that, you know, killing is wrong, but I tell you, if you like have hate in your heart for your brother, it's, it's the same. Your attitude is what really um, Mm -hmm. seems to matter with these things. And um, I think tithing and generosity in church is kind of in the same category. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so a lot of us don't give because our attitude is wrong. A lot of us give and still have the wrong attitude. And that's probably just says, I mean, that's the story of the, the, she gave her two, uh, the two widow, the mites, right. Is that, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, it's contrasted against the the Pharisee who is standing there. Hey, look at me, you know, and he's given a lot more. So it's not the quantity. It's, it's the heart behind it that I think seems Mm -hmm. to really matter. Yeah. Yeah, and interestingly, Paul in Second Corinthians there also says no one should give under compulsion. Yeah, which means if if the church mandating ten percent feels like compulsion, and you're like angry that you have to give it, it's better that you not give it all. Yeah. So yeah, Is that that good answer to the question. Good answer. Yes. Good answer. Didn't even talk about belly buttons. Yeah. Speaking of belly buttons. <laughs> well, yeah, we want to hear, hear about the belly buttons. I can't believe you don't know. The wide, the good argument for it. Yeah. All right, Matt. Research. <laughs> what what, is, what does Ken Ham say about the belly button question? <laughs> I want to know. All right. What's uh, what's our next question? Okay. Well, I do have. I well, do he have looks a, that up. No, I have a follow up. I want to know if you find something. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I do have a follow up. And okay. you could say this is off topic, and you don't. You know, you you'd rather not talk about it. But why don't we talk about giving very much at the gathering? And why, when we talk about giving, do we often, you know, give some type of, uh, you know, like deeper explanation with it whenever we bring up giving? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why is that? So just on a, on a very personal level. I am, I am um, disappointed, and don't want to be linked in with a lot of yeah. Christians who talk about giving in the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. And I, I think there is, there has been in the past probably fifty to seventy five. And I mean, there's always been hucksters, right? Yeah, there's always been. But and a huckster is a a like a charlatan, someone who's taking yes, advantage of nice people. Word. <laughs> okay. Yes. So, but I think the rise of television yeah. actually mm-hmm. increased that. Like uh-huh. you, you know, you have. We're not going to name names. The big uh-huh. names of people who they 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 take people's money, mm-hmm. and I don't like that. And I want to make sure that we disassociate ourselves from that kind of thing. And so, if we err on the side of talking about money less than we should, I'm okay with that because I want people to understand we're not them. Mm-hmm. And I'm always going to give some disclaimers when I talk about money because I want people to understand we're not them. They they've given the name of Christ a bad name. Yeah. And I and I, I don't I don't want to have anything to do with that. I don't want to look like that. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. That's I I think that that's important. We talk that mm-hmm. often comes up in starting point of. You know, the, the money questions, mm-hmm. like where, where does your money go? How do you use your money? And, you know, we are an open book as far mm-hmm. as that's concerned. Um, yeah. You know, I've, I've had several conversations with people about that type of stuff. Okay. Uh, Matt, do you have your uh, answer? You're still Googling Ken Ham. It seems I was... <laughs> like Ken Ham is on the side that Adam and Eve did not. Oh. Ooh. And that's... How do you guys doesn't feel about, surprise, you guys feel It doesn't surprise that? me. And it it does doesn't surprise me a little bit. It doesn't surprise me. I want to know why, though. Uh, his reasoning <laughs> for it... He's a purist. That, that Ken Ham... Well, this is not going to be the first time Ken Ham and I have disagreed. <laughs> yeah, the <true>, same. <laughs> this might be the first time we've agreed. <laughs> it's I just, much, I, that's not true. But that's it's not true, pretty but. much coming down to that since Adam and... and 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 Eve uh, were were made perfect and mm. and not in a mother's there's um a womb that they did not need it. That's essentially what Ham. Like like I said, Ham like I said, that it's unnecessary. Why would God do I, something unnecessary? I, I disagree. <laughs> I'll tell you. Let me let me tell you oh, why. Wait wait wait. God does. 
I mean, to say he doesn't do unnecessary exactly. things and, and men have nipples. Like, I, so I think that that's it's all like part. A, I, I guarantee there's a reason behind men having nipples. It's a weird it's conversation. Balance. But <laughs> the, the universe is a perfect example of this. Does the universe actually need to be so expansive? Well, yes, because it the massiveness helps with even the small things work. Why do we need different kinds of fruit? Because of our diet. But Need what our diet is a reaction to minerals. what's available, not necessarily. Well, could, God you know, could have very easily just made like one food that was because exactly what, what we well, needed. He could have just given us like one set of taste buds. I, I hate getting well, into this the, is what I'm for saying enjoyment. Is, 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 yes, that is for right. enjoyment. So what I'm saying the is the belly that, button is for enjoyment. No, no, no. <laughs> have you but, ever picked lint out of your belly button? You, all that's the time. Pretty, My kids think it's the kids think it's so weird. The rails are way over there. It no, collects the, 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 lint. the point is, right. is, is God. God always does more than necessary. Yeah, like that. That's just who He is. He, he I don't, is I, way more than necessary. So, in, in again, back to Genesis one. I mean, two, I may, three. I may slightly. You may freely eat of all the trees in the garden. You don't. It's not because you need to eat, but you may freely eat of all the trees yeah. in the garden because this. This is who God is. He, he's He's generous. He gives us more than we need, more than we could ever I, expect. See, I see it out of a, <laughs> a, an expression of creation. God is creative. God needs a creative outlet in that sense and we're in the same anything well i'm just saying he that's who part of who he is you know he created all of these things you know like we are an extension of that so therefore you know these are for for us to enjoy and and in the same way that god is a creator we are a creator so i would say it's all efficient let me ask you a question yeah so when god created the on the day that god created all the vegetation Uh uh-huh how do you think he did that you mean other than speaking it into existence? Well, he did that. Yeah. Okay. But then what happened when he spoke? That it happened. But what happened? That that all the things... There were just a bunch of seeds in the ground that he had to water them and the sun had to do its stuff well, and there I had mean, to be... It, all, and, it, and, and, you know, years later you had trees. You know, he's delegating these things, but... Well, no, I'm asking. Like, what do you think? Do you think... Did like, they get it like immediately appeared or did so you're it... You're asking the chicken the or the egg question, right? No. Was it a mature... It's, it's, uh, was a yeah. world created in a I, mature state. It's honestly not something I think about yeah. at all well, I'm because it's to. not it's not important to me. Yes, but if it I, is important. If to me it's not important. Well, it I realize be. it's important. But if you want to know about belly buttons, okay. it's important. Well, I I think that it spoke into existence and it was there. That would be where I would okay. lean. But I could also I could also fall into the camp. Like I'm not passionate enough about it to say. Well, maybe he created the seeds and that'll happen, or maybe so, it was a sped up process. I so you know I don't know. Do you think that there were any stars visible from Earth the first day there was land and stars? Yeah. Do you know how long it takes for light from stars to get to Earth? It yeah, it takes a long time. But if it was in ex, if it's expanding, growing universe, they could have been closer at the time. This is where I struggle with the <laughs> is, is whenever you get into the could have yeah. conversation with God. Sure, like that is always a thing. Yeah. And then it's like, but does yeah. it actually well, matter? It matter? Here, I'm, I'm in John's camp. No, here's here's why it matters. Okay, okay? <laughs> God could have created it. You know, seven days. 24 literal seven, seven days, yeah. right? You could have done that. God could have created in seven days that were ages and yeah. you know, all this stuff, right. you know, happened gradually that he, he could, he can do whatever he wants. This is where Ken Ham would be, uh, getting, an an would be losing his be mind. getting an aneurysm right, right. now. <laughs> Here's here, but, but where, it, where it begins to matter is when you get to Adam and Eve, Yeah, right? Were there a, a literal two people mm-hmm. that literally were in a garden and literally disobeyed God. I, I would think so. I think so too. Yeah. I think you have to. You have to. I mean, you you really do lose a lot if you yeah. lose that. Yeah, I, okay? I would. I would agree with that. So, I like that being the case. The the question then becomes: Were were Adam and Eve created as babies, mm-hmm. or did he create them as, as adults? He, I well, think he doesn't adults. say he created them as babies. It, so no, I you think, think that would be an important factor. I think he created them as adults. Yeah. But I think that that's I think that probably indicates that maybe that's how he created okay. everything. He created everything with the appearance of age. That's why there were stars visible immediately. That's why there were trees right away. Mm-hmm. That's why the, the there were there were fish in the sea. There were animals walking around that weren't all baby animals. I think I think the initial yeah. creation was done with the appearance of age. Can can you ex- belly yeah? Could you could you explain why? Maybe give a little bit more insight on why it's so important that. Adam, Adam and Eve were, 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 you know, already adults. 
I don't think it's important that they were already adults. Okay. I think that's what it appears. Okay. I think it's important that they were literal people. Okay. I think that, that yeah, could you explain? Matters. Could you explain why that matters? Jesus thought they were. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, I, know there's a, I know it's a simple answer, but I think it's... There's a lot of other reasons, but yeah. Jesus thought they were, so I do. Well, okay. and, and that whole concept of Christ being the second Adam, right? And right. that yeah. is dependent mm-hmm. upon there being a first Adam. Um, you know, and, and people sometimes like to play games with the word yeah. and, you know, right. Well, so just go back to the original yeah. Hebrew, how, how we, yeah. How, how, how we understand death, how we understand sin, how we understand the connection between the two. I, I think all of that matters. And so, you know, if you don't have that, that first Adam and Eve story, when did sin happen? You know, why, why is, why does the world not make sense? You know, how did evil get into the world? Those are all really important questions. And and God chose to reveal to us, this is how it happened. So, you know, when we try to find ways around it, you know, why do we do that? I just think you're making Ken Ham happy. (laughs) You're welcome, Ken. (laughs) AKA a (laughs) Blinken. Does he have the a Blinken beard? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Are we, are we, this is actually ended up being, (laughs) Kind of interesting. Okay. We're, we're kind of rolling here. We are. On we are. time. Um, why do you think the giving challenge is so much? Why do you like the giving challenge? So, I'm sorry. Why do you like? I missed. That's an important word in there. Why do you like the giving challenge so much? I like the giving challenge so much because I'm a big believer in next steps. Uh-huh. Right? And we, we talk about that a lot here. And that, first steps. And first steps. Yeah. And sometimes your next step needs to be your first step. Right. Um, so, you know, spiritual growth happens one step at a time. And a lot of times those can be little tiny steps. Uh, the giving challenge is a really small step you can take one right after another that leads into a really healthy habit. So yeah. that, that, that's always the ideal, right? Is mm-hmm. to take baby steps until you develop a habit and then let that habit shape you. Yeah. And so what the giving challenge does is it shapes you to be a more generous person one baby step at a time. And yeah. just, so just for, so people know, the, the basic giving challenge is this. Give $10 more than you normally do. Mm-hmm. Wait and see if God provides. When you realize that he's provided, set yourself a generosity goal. Say, this is where I want to get to. So maybe that's 10% of my income, 5% of my income. Maybe it's $100 a week, whatever it might be. Uh, I want to give that much. And then keep taking those baby steps to get there. So keep adding $10 a week yeah. incrementally. And at the end of each week, say, hey, did God still meet my needs? If he did, then you keep going. With, with the concept of giving God your best. Yeah, giving God your first and your best. Your first and your yep. best. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And and it's important to note that it's not wait and see if God gives you what you want. Yeah. It's does it give you what you need? Mm-hmm. He's and not a vending like you right. said, he's not a vending yeah. machine. If you want to if you want to get more in depth, go back and watch the sermon yeah. from this right. last Sunday. You you did a good job explaining it there. All right. So are we done? Look at the we size of this done. one. You're not going to eat it. I, I generously gave it you to did. you. I'm taking. Well, it I don't back. even think it's a full. Stop I think it's saying missing that that is a generous some. thing. To I do. think maybe that this was a super right generous here thing might. To do. I'm, taking, I'm taking this back. <laughs> okay. Literally I'm gonna be, the I'm most gonna, disgusting thing I've I'm ever read. I'm going to be greedy. Okay. Which is the opposite of generosity. Please be greedy. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us, and we will see you back here next week.